No lab coat this week. Rick Schneider from Polaris is coming over and I just want to be cool. Not that science isn't cool, it's the frickin' shiznits, but when the cool kids come over, I just want to fit in. And let's be honest, I don't have many guests on this channel. So it's casual day. Is this cool? I hope it's cool. The story so far, Intel has sent Rick and I an Intel Evo based HP Spectre laptop to see what we can do. An unlikely collaboration between me, an astronomer in Byron Bay, and Rick, a heavy metal guitarist from Sydney. And as I speak, Rick is traveling up Highway 1 from his house to my house. And as I try to restrain the fanboy inside me, I'm cleaning up a bit and polishing the observatory to the soundtrack of Polaris's Masochist. Am I addicted to the misery? Is it so always be? Which is a song that I'm pretty sure is about being an astronomer. Stay tuned as I share the joy, the wonder, and the existential angst of space with Rick from Polaris. And join in with our creative process as we try to write, record, film, and edit a space heavy music video on the Intel Evo based HP Spectre laptop. My name is Dylan O'Donnell and you're watching Star Stuff. Rick, you've arrived. Yes, uh, after the arduous drive. But <laughs> it's no, a it's... long drive, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, I'm used to drives from tours, but I'm also used to flying these days. So it was a, it was true, a, true. Yeah, a bit of a wake up call to have Ooh, to do that drive again. Drive. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to show you uh, my man cave. This is my happy place. Uh, but first, I'll just open it up for you. There she is. It's like the, um, it's like the scene in Star Wars when the, the pot opens <laughs> and Darth Vader's on the inside. But yeah, this is where I spend most of my time. Uh, when when the night's clear enough, when I can see the stars. Yeah, hopefully we can get a bit of vision tonight. I'm going to give you a little crash course on space and astrophotography and sort of how I make those photos. Okay. And hopefully um, if there's any beginner astrophotographers watching, they can know the process from the start. And I can see if I can explain it in hopefully two minutes. Yeah, so. if I get it then, <laughs> I mean, I don't want to be disparaging, but anyone can get it. <laughs> I reckon you'll get it. All right, let's do it. So, this is a telescope, believe it or not. <laughs> Never seen one as big as this. <laughs> well, it's, it's not the size that matters, it's what you do with it. But actually it is the size that matters because uh, big telescopes are great. How can I explain this? The Earth is moving through space and it's not the stars that are moving, it's actually the Earth that's spinning and so it looks like the stars are slowly moving through space. So right. uh, if we take a photo and we open up the exposure for even like, you know, 5, 10, 20 seconds, if the telescope is still, you're going to see the stars streaking. They turn into little lines because the stars appear to be moving. So a telescope like this is set up on an equatorial mount, which spins around on this axis. Right. Hopefully I won't hit you there. No, I'll get some clearance. Because it's spinning around in that circle, that's the exact motion of the stars it's only changing on one axis so just right. on that rotation now the other one is uh, called deck and it rotates on this axis okay and that's just so you can find stuff in the sky so right that's like your locator and then this is your yeah, tracking it's a sort of essentially tripod yeah line. with these two axes you can find any place in the sky but it's not just like up down left right it's sort yeah. of a bit funny because it's all based around this ra axis here that's the motion of the stars across the sky okay so the star that it's pointing to right now if i tracked it across the night it would be moving like this right and that's just all automated once you kind of set it yeah so, so it'll, it'll track that at the exact speed that that's going then on the back here we've got these specialized cameras okay. now these cameras are sort of the same as like the camera that uh, that you have it's the same as a dslr camera it's the same as a camera in your phone but the chip's a bit bigger and the main difference is there's a big fridge on the back of it so so this keeps it pretty cool like yeah. up to minus 15 degrees celsius so yeah. it's just super chill and what that does is removes all that noise so you can see more of the actual galaxy or nebula that you're looking at other than that, we've got a little focuser here, so that's so that I don't have to twiddle knobs out here. I can actually do this all inside on the laptop, and then I can set it up for a run, and I might go for hours yeah. and end up with, I don't know, 50 photos, and then stack the, all of those photos together, and that's how I get an image of space. Okay. <laughs> yeah, because you're always saying, like, yeah, uh, 
compiling and like processing photos and I was like yeah like what's the process even me saying that I'm processing images yeah. like why would I be processing like I need you in like yeah. I don't know Windows file editor or whatever <laughs> like going in MS Paint and touching it up <laughs> no we're not Photoshop we're, we're, not, we're not faking the images we are using Photoshop to clean them up but we don't fake it some photographers who I've called out before who do um, you're like saturation up to 150% exactly, exactly. <laughs> most people think of a uh, photo is like point and shoot right like if you've got a telescope like this why can't I just put a phone on the back of it and click uh, but if you did that you'd see almost nothing. It's just, it's so dark out there. So to get some of these galaxies and nebulas, you've got to expose for minutes at a time and then stack hours of those minutes at a time together in a process called stacking. Uh, and that's really CPU intensive. And that's, okay. uh, that's why we need a, a bit of processing power. I should probably, while we're here, see if we can actually get it to point to something. And yeah, why not? There we go. <laughs> There's some stars. I was beginning to think you were all, all talking those stars. So you can actually see yeah, wow. little ridges here in space. You can see this is called the Keyhole Nebula. It seems to have gone down in quality since we started. Because we were getting way more before. Yeah. I reckon there's some high cloud going over that. Ah. Just washing out the image. But I can show you one I prepared earlier. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. At this point, I thought it was important to actually take Rick out to the Cape. Because out there, apart from the big lighthouse in the sky, there is little light pollution. And there is something to be said about standing there under the night sky, experiencing the full weight of the stars above you. So obviously I've been using the laptop for image processing and running the observatory and live streaming. It's been really good and I plan to use the laptop more for video editing as well and to help pull this space metal video project together. But I wanted to find out what Rick's been doing with the laptop. So how cool is this? Rick is in my house playing guitars, his guitars, and he's been showing me these riffs. I'll play you a little clip of just before. <laughs> We've now got it hooked up to the Intel Evo Bass HP Spectre and now we're running guitar tones through it in real time. At the moment we've just got one track just recording at the moment. Um, it's got a just a guitar plug-in from STL Tones on there and yeah. <laughs> That sounds pretty insane. sweet. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that sounds really good. But while we're all set up, I just I just want to hear some of those tasty Polaris riffs. All right, you can what's, what's a request? Uh, Masochist, of course. There's not that many riffs in that. Oh, I guess mm. there's the there's the pre-chorus, like the. Uh... <laughs> Etc. <laughs> oh my god, I've never played a seven string guitar before. Oops. <laughs> It's just like basically presets of someone who's gone in there and put five different effects <laughs> cool, on the cool. one thing and it's just like changes something from a guitar sound to something like an alien speaking from outer space. <laughs> yeah, I noticed Valhalla, a lot of the Valhalla uh, reverb stuff is all space, it's all named after space stuff. Ooh. But nice. I know it's all it's all tough because it's like I want it, I don't want it to just be me dictating everything, like I want to like get an idea sure. for it. Cause, Obviously with space, like, you know, you, you like with what you were showing me last night, you can do some really wicked pans and like have some like noise and like everything looking mm. a bit chaotic. But then at the end of the day, you are going to kind of focus on these like grand vistas and kind of want a bit more of that kind of open and... Yeah, I know. I, I do sort of want to have 
like some of the guitar footage of, as, as well of yeah. playing and stuff. Well, I'll definitely it. shoot whatever I but get. But I don't want to be any. Don't want to do like something really cliched, like having a green screen and then you like flying through yeah, space. Yeah, that's like that's bit. yeah, it's a fine line. <laughs> yeah. I mean, my uh, my six string. If I end up using that, that's almost a green screen in and of itself. <laughs> True. <laughs> It's got the big strut groove after with it. How sick is that? I still can't believe the tone, I can't believe the player, and I can't believe how good it sounds just through a laptop. I mean, I'm, I'm floored. I think this is gonna work really well. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> now, I wanna say one other thing before I wrap this video up. Rick is such a nice guy. We've been working on this project together, so I've got to know him a little bit. But on the last day of making this video, after everything had wrapped up, Rick took the time to actually come back to my house and sign my kid's broken elbow cast. He also took the time to have a little jam with him as well, which is cool because my kid is the one who got me onto Polaris in the first place. So for him to actually sit down and have a little jam with Rick, it made his day. <laughs> Hope you enjoyed this creative detour. The next stop for me will be to actually see Polaris live in concert and then I'm gonna head down to Rick's studio in Sydney and we'll work on the song more there. I have a really good feeling about this. Huge props to Intel for putting this all together. Stay tuned.